guess what I did? This is what did this was the yourself? night. You've explained this story. I was to gonna us. say, when have I heard this story before? Yeah. Okay, Has this so happened I, multiple times? This or? is it. This is okay. this, this is the one the story. I pissed myself willingly, purposefully, because oh. I didn't I didn't want to get I didn't want to have the Blair, <laughs> Blair Witch kit. Okay, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Well, hello there, and welcome to a brand new episode of the Confused Breakfast Podcast. Do you remember the pure joy of a trip to the video rental store as a kid? I do. It's so hard to beat the ease of the modern era in streaming platforms where you don't even have to leave your couch, but there was something truly special about heading to Blockbuster, picking out a movie by hand, but not being able to watch it because you're a fucking dummy who can't read maps and you got lost on the way home. Josh! <laughs> On this podcast, we revisit and dissect some of our favorite childhood movies from that magical era to see if they still move us the way they did as kids. I'm your host, Mike Schulte. Joining me as always, two dudes who like their mom's mashed potatoes and a piece of ass. Sean Pryor and AJ Vens, how the heck are you? Dude, there is something about that line that hits home so fucking much. We will get we'll get there. I'm sorry, are you an American? That uh, is that is a thing. My mom's Joyce. mashed potatoes are the best mashed potatoes. Well, well that's, weird. that's weird because my mom's mashed potatoes are the best. Well, everybody knows everybody knows that there's supposed to be a little thing between Josh and Heather, so that's what, that's what I'm just saying. Thank God they cut that out. Do the mashed potato. Everybody knows that. Well, boys, on today's episode, we discuss a film that was in the Guinness Book of World Records for the top budget to box office ratio yeah. for a mainstream feature film. A movie that also holds the record for the most puke cleaned up off the floor of movie theaters around the world. Wow. A film that has the <laughs> highest score on Rotten Tomatoes of any film that was also nominated for a Razzie Award for Worst Picture. We are, of course, talking about 1999's The Blair Witch Project. Yeah. <gasps> well, damn dang it. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for another nostalgic journey to the past with The Confused Breakfast. Sit back. Relax and enjoy wherever you are in the world. Take it away, boys. Why didn't you have a crash on that on that cat? I didn't write that song. All right. <laughs> no. Oh yeah, uh, no big deal. I'll go back into my my <laughs> sp my Spotify files and yeah yeah. Hey, Please. if you're new to the podcast, we're going to be reviewing this movie scene by scene That's with a mean. modern eye. But in order to do that properly, we must first dissect it and talk about it with pure nostalgia. AJ. We got it's spooky season. We know we go to AJ first. <laughs> <That's not laughs> What's the? Fr Tell me you've even seen this movie. All right, hang on. Let me see. <laughs> Literally yes. got dust on it. So the <laughs> Pre <laughs> prepare for a motion picture experience unlike anything you've ever seen, heard, or feared before. Oh, that's one sentence. Please uh, tell me you've never seen this. Peter Travers called this scary <laughs> as hell. Hey, he's doing your job. I have seen this before. Okay, guys. I knew it. I knew it. You had to have seen yeah, this movie before. Yeah, so I, I heard so much about this movie, and, and I, I caught so much of the backlash more than I really caught anything else. A lot of people, and now I kind of, like, I'm thinking back, a lot of those people telling me this were very much about... Uh, trying to trying to trying to trying to be cultured, you know. <laughs> it's so stupid. I can't believe <sighs> people think this is scary, right? That's a lot of the feedback I got. When I, when I finally saw it, I, I understand like why it, it kind of was this like uh, almost instant cult like kind of yep. phenomenon. And um, uh, looking back and, and kind of thinking about the first time I really got to see it, like there were moments that. The, we've said it before on this podcast, talking about the spooky stuff, your mind will do much worse things than what you actually see. You know, perfect example, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, yeah. right, about how much you actually don't see and how much your mind makes up. So that being said, um, nostalgically, did I enjoy it? Who are you talking to? <laughs> um, I think, honestly, I, I would probably be like, I, I probably tried to tough guy it out and yeah. be like, oh, the, I saw the camera fall. Wasn't what, that scary? <laughs> whatever. <laughs> I know what they're trying <laughs> to do. There's obviously a guy behind that tree. There's whatever. something. I rationalize this personally. Uh, 
<laughs> right, no, I get it. I get it. So, so you thought this was like a one, but you're nostalgically for if you had to be true to yourself, you're actually going to give this more of a seven and a half kind tr- tr- of a thing. Truth, truth be told, I would probably actually give this like a, a six point six. But to be tough. But to be tough? Like, you hated it. Oh, no, to be tough. <laughs> no, I was going to say, never mind. No, you're good. You're to good. be tough? There's like a 2.3. <laughs> oh, oh, I see. Opposite of what I was thinking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I see. Dude, I don't even, it didn't even matter. Bro. Like, it didn't even tell you anything. I already uh, knew the twist before the movie was over. You can't even tell what's in the bundle of sticks. <laughs> the twist. <laughs> the twist. Here's a twist. Uh. Sean, what about you, man? What's your nostalgic rating on this movie? <clears throat> okay, man. Well. Uh, I'll tell you the first time I watched this movie was um, actually when it came out on VHS, home video. And I was at my cousin's house. We used to go there all the time. My uh, uncle has a ping pong table down there. We used to play ping pong, get family get togethers, do uh, green beans with uh, um, uh, bacon in, in, in it, and just meals and everything. It was like perfect. It was like very comfort. But then my cousins, who are all girls on that side, wanted to watch a scary movie and they wanted to watch this. And me and my brother were over there and I knew that me and my brother were staying the night that night and I couldn't help my morbid curiosity but peek a few glances at, at the screen while they were watching The Blair Witch Project. Worst decision of my fucking yes. life because as soon as me and my brother, my brother went to bed, we slept in the basement. Oh, that's terrible. That's bad, Sean. This, <sighs> this basement didn't have any light because, nope. you know, they don't do that for kids. Uh, <laughs> back, we don't waste electricity for the young back kids. In the, back in 19, <laughs> maybe probably 2000. Um, in the aught nines. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then there was a, a man-made bathroom down here. Of course. And so I had to go to the bathroom. <laughs> I think I had to go to the bathroom so bad because I drank too much Kool-Aid or Capri Sun, damn yeah. dang it. Capri Sun. <laughs> Clearly Canadians. I drank way too much, and I had to go to the bathroom so bad, and I did not go because I was so scared the Blair Witch was going to get me, and guess what I did? This is what did this was the yourself? night. You've explained this one I was going to say, when have I heard this story before? Yeah. Okay, Has this so happened I, multiple times? This or? is it. This, okay. is, this, this is, is the one? The story. I pissed myself willingly. Purposefully, because oh. I didn't, I didn't want to get, I didn't want to have the Blair Witch. Kid. <laughs> okay, wait, wait, wait. So, y- how old were you? Two thousand. Uh, I was born in ninety one. I can't do the math. Okay, so as as a nine year old kid, Sean had to make the decision. It's so <laughs> hard to piss yourself, like <laughs> willingly to like let it happen. It, oh yeah. And so he had to basically be like, all right. So the fictional witch will get me and take me to hell if I get up out of the sleeping bag or. I could just piss myself in my any maze house at my uncle's house around a bunch of girls. No, uh, me and my brother were just down there. Oh, thank God! You would have had to explain it in the morning. You know what? Here's the funny thing: I don't remember a goddamn thing about the next morning after. You're gonna, you would have, but you have to explain why you're wearing one of their dad's like (laughs) pairs of shorts. I might have, (laughs) I might have if I remembered. I I blocked it like. I literally blacked out the morning after. Like, uh. as soon as I let my bladder go, black. <laughs> the Blair Witch's spell was off of you at that point. Uh, Blair like, Witch black. That's uh, what we call that. Dude, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give this a 1.5. It scared the <laughs> fuck out of me. <laughs> Uh, Fuck this movie, dude, dude. Sean, I'm in the same camp as you, man. Like, <laughs> I was, uh, I was a senior in high school when this came out, and it was all the rage. Like, oh, it's fucking I scary. Was nine years I old. know. <laughs> I'm old as fuck, nine dude. Years old. Hey, that seems like a lot. <laughs> That's like six years later. Okay. <laughs> Fucking Jesus! That's, That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying. No, that, we're not talking. We're not. We're not no, focusing no, on I, your age. We're focusing on Sean's. I pissed myself <laughs> as a senior in high school. Okay, now we're focusing on okay, your age. I feel a lot better. <laughs> no, uh, dude. I, as we will get to, and there's many movies that came out in like '99 that it's, it's a big year that fucking scared the shit out of me. Independence Day being one of them. We'll get to that eventually. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Like to where I could not sleep for years after I saw that movie and Blair Witch was one that you I couldn't... refused I like refused to see it <laughs> especially because I heard about Never it mind. and then there was a there was a scary house where like a fucking hermit guy lived in it and he walked up out of the woods to nah. the road and then walked the road to the train tracks and I'm like that's the guy that's the Blair Witch guy from everything I'm hearing. So mm. I didn't watch this for probably three, four years. And when I finally did, I was like, yeah, that's just not for me. I don't I don't like it. I, I, first watch on this for me is probably a 4.5. Really? Yeah, just not, I'm just not into it. Like, I don't like witches and stuff that could be real. No thanks. So you were this of is, the age of like, well, of sound mind enough to be like, of, of have opinions about movies. 
me as a nine year old, I'm like, that's scary. Don't like it. I was scared. We'll talk about it in Halloween, but I, t- I tell my mom to get rid of that VHS. <laughs> well, listen, we got an executive producer, Josh Miller. This film was chosen by the man himself. He said this one will be fun. I don't know if there was a movie that really encapsulated the na- late 90s as much as this did, at the very least what the internet was at the time. I know I've said in past reviews how different we looked at movies back then when all we had was trailers from TV and theaters. There really wasn't watching videos online via dial-up internet. There was only talking to babes, or what you thought were babes, via AOL. ASL, am I right? Yeah, dude. Of course, there was flooding <laughs> your computer with viruses <laughs> from AS- age, sex, location. You guys oh. are way too young for that, right? Oh, that's super weird. I thought it meant American Sign Language. That's super too. weird. ASL? What uh, age, sex, location? No. That's Logan? what that means. American sign, American no, no, no. sign language. No, no, ASL means uh, age, sex, location. Oh, you speak oh, ASL? Oh, you speak. This is ridiculous. <laughs> you guys. speak I am? Yes, <laughs> AOL I am. <laughs> Anyway, he said, of course, there was flooding your computer with viruses from LimeWire LimeWire and Kazaa. Napster wasn't terrible about viruses as they really hadn't found a way to implant effective viruses in MP3s at that time. Blair Witch was the first movie that used the Internet and a Web page as a tool to promote, enhance the story. If this isn't the first found footage movie, it has to be the movie that landed the genre on the map. At the time being what it is, and looking back, it landed perfectly. For months, there was talk amongst friends that there's a documentary movie coming out about this witch in the woods that tormented and led to the deaths of many and was chronicled by three college students that go missing. There are still some really, really outdated message boards design-wise that are still active today, uh, BlairWitch.ProBoards.com being mm. one of them. From what I could find, Lionsgate film in the near past finally took the original website down. Yeah, I vividly remember waiting for this movie to come out. I know I didn't see it in theaters, but it was probably a week before I could make it in. And I feel like there were two camps. The first camp was the, of, of those that thought it was the scariest thing they'd ever seen, and then the ones that thought it was stupid. I was the former. As someone that grew up camping in the woods, I came out of the movie, swore I was never going into the woods again. While watching the movie, I too thought it was stupid, but that was just to mask how scared I was. Mm -hmm. For me, I was 21 and genuinely terrified. I watched the movie a handful of times over the last quarter of a century. Doesn't that make you feel old? Yeah, I'm with you, Josh. (laughs) And it still has some of that allure with me. If you watch it with the right mindset, if you don't pay too close attention, it's going to be interesting to watch it again with that old confused breakfast critical eye. My nostalgic score is a 7.99. Wow. Even nostalgically, it can't be above an 8 for me. So that takes us to a 5.15. That's pretty low, fellas. good. 5.15 5.15 is going to slide it into about the eighth from the bottom. It's, interestingly enough, just above the Evil Dead, just below Breakfast Club is where that flies. Interesting. <laughs> How is it that that other than the, the the professional Josh Miller, am I the highest one? Because you're trying this? to be tough. Remember? I was. Oh, that's right. I'm trying to be. I am tough. Sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Never forget I said anything. <laughs> Maybe you do like scary movies. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, next. Oh, is I time, love them. Next is time to learn all the pertinent, important details of the movie. We're gonna break this down from a modern day now. Sean, you're going to take us into it. What do you got, man? Here you go, man. The Blair Witch Project, produced by Robin Cowie and Greg Hale, written by Daniel Myrick and Eduardo Sanchez, cinematography by Neil Fredericks, music by Antonio Cora. Not much music in this but until the end, but it's pretty good still, I think. Edited by Daniel Myrick and Eduardo Sanchez, directed by Daniel Myrick and Eduardo Sanchez. Cast, Heather Donahue, Joshua Leonard, Mike Williams, Bob Griffin, Ed Swanson, Jim King, and <laughs> I, I don't know. I can't. I, Go ahead. Susie Gooch. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Wait, who, who's is that the witch lady? I think it's one of the interviewees. Susie Gooch? Yeah. Susie Bonch? Yeah. Susie Scranus? <laughs> Susie, Susie Vanilla Strip of the Beatles <laughs> <Holland? laughs> Cool. Susie no. Susie, Susie I'm going to Susie Scranus on this one. I appreciate that. <laughs> Daniel Myrick and Eduardo Sanchez were film students at the University of Florida and wanted to make a horror movie. The duo felt that documentaries on mythical legends and ghosts were scarier than most horror movies, so the filmmakers, along with producing partners Robin Cowie and Greg Hale, formed Haxon Films. And going... And go uh, and went on to write the film. Myrick and Sanchez wrote a 35-page outline of the film, in which 
Uh, most of the dialogue would be improvised, and they created the entire Blair Witch legend themselves being inspired by the actual witch trials in Salem and movies like The Legend of Body- Boggy Creek and the McPherson Tapes. So Haxon Films, they uh, got that name from a actual kind of uh, silent movie back in the day called Haxon, which was like a chronicling of uh, like a witch trial, I think. Um, it's really cool and kind of a groovy movie to watch. Like if you like pick your own soundtrack to it, oh, it's, cool. it's fun to like watch at parties. Uh, I've never done it, but I really hope to someday. <laughs> it's really fun to do. I've never done it. <laughs> <laughs> the filmmakers held some crap about me not listening. I was really paying attention. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> the filmmakers held a casting call in a theater in New York in which they saw 2,000 auditions. The casting call called for actors with very strong improvisation skills and willingness to be uncomfortable most of the shoot. Heather Donahue was cast when response when her response to an improv prompt won the producers over. The prompt was, "You've served seven years of your nine year sentence in prison. Why would you let? Why would I? Why would we let you out on parole?" That was her question for like a improv immediately response. improv. Okay. And, hey. she, and she just went off. They <clears> said <throat> she uh, she she just said, "I don't think you should." It scared her. It like. scared them. <laughs> like there's the only one that that it scared the the duo. Wow. Yeah. Um, Joshua Leonard was uh, cast because he knew how to run a camera, and then uh, <laughs> I didn't find anything on how Mike was cast. We'll Mike, get, we'll like, get to Mike him. sounds like a good name we can yell in the woods. <laughs> yeah. Mike got the, the DAT equipment there you go. for them. Mike owned the trailer. <laughs> Super low budget. <laughs> Principal <laughs> photography began on October 23rd, 1997. The film was shot on CP6 film and Hi8 video camera. Shooting the film would be a grueling experience for the actors, as you can see in the film. They were given a GPS device that would locate them to caches of food, Jesus. water, and any story of uh, or character prompts. The film shot for eight days, and during those eight days, the filmmakers would deliberately and gradually deplete the actors of food, making them ornery and angry as the shoot went on. Principal photography concluded on Halloween night. <sighs> Basically, out there playing a game of like not so amazing race. Yeah, it's like, oh, what the fuck, God, this kind of sucks, uh, race. Yeah. <laughs> this kind of sucks, race. <laughs> That's a show I would tune into. You need to watch that show. Tune in tonight for oh. the. This kind of sucks. Sucks is spelled S U X. This kind of sucks, race. <laughs> The Blair Witch Project was the first film ever to be marketed almost entirely online. The website for the Blair Witch (laughs) featured articles, missing posters, and faked news footage prompting the disappearance of the, uh, promoting the disappearance of the uh, college students in Burkittsville. For the first year of the website launch and the film's release, the IMDb information for the three main actors read missing or presumed dead. That's so sick. By August of 1999, the website had more than 160 million hits. Jesus. In July of 1999, the Sci-Fi the sci- the Channel, the Sci-Fi <laughs> Channel, <laughs> it's Sci-Fi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sci-Fi <laughs> What the <laughs> This is this is just like a shopping network for soap. What's it's going the, on? The Safari Channel. Oh, the Safari Channel. Have you have you visited? It's. Uh, I wish they'd stop laughing. For for horror movie enthusiasts, it's it's the Safari Channel. Okay. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> July of 1999, the Safari Channel would air a fictional documentary called "The Curse of the Blair Witch," which Sci-fi. was made by Myrick and Sanchez. The documentary told the fictional account of the Blair Witch legend with all of the backstory leading up to the college student's disappearance. The Blair Witch Project was released in theaters on July 30th, 1999 on a budget of 200000 estimated uh, budget. The film would go on to make $248.6 million at the box office, making it the highest grossing independent film at the time. The film would garner two sequels in The Book of Shadows and... The Bla- Blair Witch, uh, just I Blair think. Witch yeah. by um, Blair our uh, our lover of yeah. uh, Christ, um, <laughs> guy who made the guest. Yeah, the guest. Yes, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> uh, it does need to be pointed out though that that what I said is it, bad. It's really the Guinness bad. Book of World Records, meaning the the most money made off of the least amount of money spent for a long so still, time. I was trying to look this up. I don't know if it still is, but it <laughs> was at the time it was for any mainstream feature film. They they said that for every one dollar spent, they made eleven thousand dollars. Okay, 
That's so fucking wow. I, yeah. I looked up, I typed in Google, I'm like the highest uh independent film yeah. earnings of all time and it was like Passion of the Christ. Yeah. I'm like whatever. Okay, Oscar movies. Oh, okay. So we're just gonna include Jim Caviezel in this. <laughs> yeah. Gotcha. No. Fair well, up enough. next, we got to go to AJ. He does the research for us, gives us the ratings, reviews of critics and fans alike. What do you got, bro? Surprisingly, there wasn't a lot of blood or red in this movie. Unfortunately, there's plenty on the, the tomato meter. Gross. I say unfortunately. I mean, it's how, you know, to each their yeah. own. 86% certified fresh. Guys, that's tied in 48th position with Tremors. 86%? Really? For the from the critics, 86%. Wow. What is what is like just below that or above? Oh, I do you think I know? I just fucking I just geez, have a list. Man, you want me you want me to tell you? <laughs> well, go ahead, AJ. Uh, Elf, Beetlejuice, The Shining, The Thing. Okay. That's below. I, just just They're to give below it a or below this. Yes. Wow. Tremors is like that kind of low budget ish kind of schlocky kind of movie, but it's still really well made, and I, I, yeah. I agree with sort that. Sort of like this. Yeah. Well, uh, audiences apparently disagree with this. Fifty six percent. So I do want to point this out. Normally, in any movie we've done, the the trend is that audiences like it a lot more than critics do. Sure. This is the first movie that has had this big of a discrepancy the opposite way. Really? This is the biggest that we've had where the critics like it and the fans don't. The opposite being Boondock Saints, probably? Correct. The okay. opposite being Boondock Saints. I think that was a 6 from the critics and like a 94 from the fans. Wow. This is not that bad, but it is in the opposite direction. So that needs wow. to be pointed out. Interesting. Okay. needs to be pointed out. Well, IMDb, IMDb found themselves right in the middle at 6.5. Tied with Twister. Tied with Twister. Yep. Are you Very kidding? low. That is about bottom 20 on our IMDb's. Well, wow. both yep. give me a case of the spins. So, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Logan's laughing. You got I, him. I got him. That's, I don't know if that's even worse. That's how AJ gets scared. He gets the case of the spins. <laughs> God damn it. Got him. <laughs> <laughs> it works. I'm good with that. Yeah. Hell yeah. I used dude. to really like this show, but all they do is laugh. All they do is laugh at this themselves. This is a scary movie. Uh, will you just take this movie seriously? <laughs> <laughs> it's made by Artisan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. Fuck it. Uh, <laughs> Dallas Observer. Uh, this gave it. They gave it a 90 out of 100. Uh, that's nine out of ten. This is easily the scariest horror picture of the 90s. Uh, a movie that can take. Uh, that can take a place among the most potent and inexonerable of modern shockers. Hmm. USA Today said 88 out of 100. Uh, the suspense becomes so unbearable that it's easy to overlook questions about whether anyone in such circumstances would continue to film. Uh, there's some bad ones here, too. Uh, there's a 50 out of 100. Uh, they gave this a half out of one. Film.com said, while it has its scary moments and while its central conceit is refreshingly imaginative, there's ultimately not much there. Fine. Um, <laughs> but here, here's the thing. is uh, 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 Christian Science Moderation. Oh, hell yeah. Had this to say. Love that 50. periodical. Oh, yeah. I go to it often for movies. Thank you. Uh, this movie would be better as a 30-minute short, though since its shaky camera work and fuzzy images get monotonous after a while, uh, and there's not much room for character development within the very limited plot. Yeah. That's actually an interesting thought. Like, it is an interesting What if this thought. was a 30-minute short? I, that is, that is, I've never thought about that. I didn't either. Casper is scarier than the entire plot. <laughs> One out of ten. <laughs> Three friends going out in the woods to make a documentary on an infamous, infamous witch uh, found near the Blair Mountain. Interviewing people who have heard or been in contact with these, in, with, to these witches. They go in the forest only to get lost and turn against each other. What a fresh genre idea for a movie. The next put, it's, I mean, kind of. When was that written? Uh, in 2023. <laughs> so are they saying that <laughs> <laughs> it's been done before? So Ugh. okay, so they don't they, live within time. Are they saying that facetiously? I have no idea. No, dude, do not give this person don't credit. Give it. Don't. So they have to be saying it facetiously, like, oh, oh, what an original movie! I've oh. seen ninety. Oh, movies, so like, yes, so say yes, yes. <laughs> uh, 
do. <laughs> they do go on to say, if you're really seeking out a horror film movie, please stay away from this. Uh, this since you'll simply be wasting 80 minutes of your life. They also abbreviated minutes to men's. Uh, have to. So they saved you some time back. Well, you know, only so many characters on uh, mm-hmm. the whole okay. website. But they, they had the audacity to say, no jump scares. Ugh. Nothing new to the story that can keep uh, keep one intact to the movie. Like You know what you'll like. You well, oh, so you're just here for jump scares? You'll like Adam Wingard's terrible sequel, Blair Witch. Good. Go Perfect. check it out. You're going to love it. You're going to love the production value. Um, let's just move on to, uh, I'm going to give you one more one out of ten here. This sucks. <laughs> In 2022. S-U-X. Yeah. <laughs> this movie is so stupid. I will be able to sleep just fine. <laughs> and the sh- <laughs> It's so the opposite of scary. I'm going to sleep like a baby. I might sleep better than I ever have. <laughs> Thank God I watched this so I could sleep tonight. <laughs> I don't have any anxiety. What a bird. Uh, <laughs> oh, and God. the trailer said it was it was scares uh, it scares in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre and that was a lie. This is so disappointing. I just wasted. They spelled, they spelled wasted like waste, like bell, like, like bells around your waist. I just wasted an hour and eighteen minutes of my life because you ate so much chips. You got them <laughs> with this loud mouth girl screaming the whole time, and then just saying f words. So I'm actually pretty disappointed. Negative one star, if I could. Women don't belong in the forest. Everyone knows. <laughs> yeah. Everyone Your main knows. problem is you gave a woman the map, and you know you never do that. <laughs> you know that a man's the navigator. He doesn't even need directions. <laughs> he just ask the trees for directions. Yeah. <laughs> All right, last one, guys. Uh, 10 out of 10. Genius filmmaking, the scariest movie I have ever seen, and this is from February 1st of 1999. Said Kev26. <laughs> Fuck yeah, dude. Um, I had the honor to see this movie at the Sundance Film Festival. Wow, that's pretty tight. Wow. This is the most genuine scary movie out there. The great thing about this movie is that it is totally believable. There is no extremely heroic character or any big special effects. This movie captures your imagination, making you one of the characters. This movie made me laugh, cry honestly, and tremble with fear. If you're looking for a scary movie, this is it. Little over the top at the end there. Cry a little bit. But I think there's some re- reality in that, yep, in great. that review, guys. I def- so I, I heard, wanted to end on that note. I heard the fact that it was Sundance's first horror movie they've ever screened. That's pretty amazing. I can't believe that. Like, I, like it's I know. Impossible it's, hard. To- it's hard to believe. Anyway, we only believe in dramas. It's true. Um, Cohen's, give us your yeah. movies. <laughs> Low budget bitches, get out of here. Get out now. Well, boys, I heard the dense woods over in Burkittsville, Massachusetts are super haunted. Okay. Let's totally go spend a few nights in the cold weather to yeah. travel deep into the woods without any camping. I do. Skills or map skills to make a documentary without documentary skills that no one's going to watch. This sounds like nothing could possibly go wrong, right? What could go wrong? Wrong. Nothing. Here we go. So scene one, in October 1994, film students Heather, Mike, and Josh set out to produce a documentary about the mythical Blair Witch. They traveled to Burkittsville, Maryland, and interview residents about the myth. After staying the night in a hotel, they meet two fishermen on their way to the woods. I have a thought that I've never thought about this movie before. The intro happens, and it tells you that... They went, they they disappeared, they went and did this, we couldn't find them, the footage was found a year later. I have found myself thinking about who f- went and found the footage, mm-hmm. and like, did they just go into the woods and get in, f- and were able to leave the woods? Like, I, I almost want to know more about that, because I it know. seems like anyone that fucking goes in there is going to have problems, and is going to get true. fucked with by the witch, right? If you so, choose to find the Blair Witch, you're going to have a bad time. You're going to have a bad time. You're going to have a bad time. I just don't understand why... <clears throat> like, you're, you're 100% right. I think that is 
that is the most overlooked thought or question in this entire thing is like, who the hell found it? Because it's in that house, the, which means they were deep in the woods. Yeah. You know, you know what? Yeah, you know what? Would be like a good sequel is that Ooh. is that and like seeing someone come out of it. You know, and we and like be fucked up they, about it. They got fucked up. They got fucked with the same way, but they found the tapes and they somehow got out. Yeah, yeah. You know how they probably tight. got out? They followed the river. Yeah, it would have been great. That's it. By, by the way, guys, if you don't know this, if you're ever wondering about uh, how to find your way out of a wilderness area, follow the stream. Is it because most civilization or people tend to set themselves up near streams and yeah, rivers, right? Correct. Well, and, and there's... It could be miles. There, it, yeah. could, it could be miles, but you know you're going one direction. And that's or you're, You know uh, you're following... A, a, in most, general, you are heading in a direction, and most water is heading south to some degree. Okay? Well, like, or like it's flowing down down the hill. Rivers, uh, river, rivers west of the Rockies either go west and south, okay, and and east of the Rockies go east and south. Gotcha. Yes. There you go. So okay, we figured it out. There you go. Congratulations. So they're in water. Maryland. If they would have followed the water, it would have been heading east to southeast. Yeah. Okay. So great. We just you just follow the river. They're probably right with, with by the time they got to like oh well we should just go east. Yeah. Anyways, you're right though. How how on earth is there somebody that found this so easily? That's what I want to know. And, it's a very interesting thought. I, and I like a, that a lot. And if it's a year later, like is it? Is it still intact because it's such like uh, because technically didn't they use very physical film, not digital? It was rolls of film, yeah, both. digital and both. rolls. Okay, and I have a Mike's fan theory later on to help Ooh, you out with that, but okay. we're gonna wait till digital later. as in like DV, so it was like still <coughs> strips of you know, it wasn't yeah. like a card they were using; they were using tapes. Okay. But <clears throat> what do you guys think of the look of this off the bat? Because we're, the version you guys were watching was it like a, a cropped? Kind of look, I don't know. Uh, I think it, I think mine was so. F for clarity, I watched this on Amazon. I think I did too because I had because uh, my wife has a Prime. Uh, Obviously, everyone's wife does subscription because she <laughs> was a student and I'm I wasn't. Um, and <laughs> so she, but she has like you know this like Amazon Prime or whatever, and we're watching on there and freebie whatever the hell it is. Freeve, freeve. Thank you, and uh, for Vey. <laughs> if you will, Sophonic. and thank you, and <laughs> um, but I don't know if they cropped it or if it was like wide angle or whatever. But at I the assume same it was time, cropped. Okay, I, and I, you're probably right. Is there a difference? On, like, my, on my Blu-ray, it's cropped. So okay, I, it, like the best version of it that you could get is probably a Blu-ray right yeah. now. Okay, and that was cropped. I'm assuming that the digital as well. Well, I think that's the way to watch it. Is is it should be cropped. It should be just like you're watching it on a square. Not you a, should. Not it a should rectangle. just be like you found this footage. Like it. That's what it should be. Like it should. Like a good found footage movie seems like you shouldn't be watching it. We have seems the, like oh, you stumbled wow. upon it. You know. We have the VHS right in front of us, and I would love to be a, like the idea of in 1999, 2000, even 2001 to be able to go back, pop in. This VHS into a, a play, into a player on like this TV yes. back yeah. here and, all and to watch it. it, yeah. Uh, I think that is an experience like a Ouija board. Yeah, you know what I mean, dude. It's uh, so well put. I, I think I think that's as much of an experience as you can get out of this movie, um, rather than watching it on your new TV that is in fact cropped. But that being said, I, I appreciate that it that it probably was, and that they kind of maintain that integrity. Yeah. Um, and you get into this, and it's it is a lot of uh, just it, it. I think the it feels very genuine. Yes. is what I want to say. Feels, it feels like no one edited it. It feels like it's just they took the two we just things together it. and we just timelined it. We yeah. just took all us. the footage we had and just put it on a yes. thing on a right. timeline. And I do like that, and the fact that there is yeah. no music really until the end kind of helps drive that home. That yeah. it's like this is just the audio we had. Sometimes it really. In fact, the first five minutes of the movie, I'm like, I can't even fucking hear this. Like, I was cranking it up. Yeah, you're cranking it up, and then it gets loud, and, and I like that it's they didn't try to fix any of that. I think there's a lot of value to that. I think there's I think there there had to have been some thought process in the sound design of like, man, it's kind of tough to hear what they're all saying. And uh, 
things are calm and lax. Yeah. They're excited to get out there and do their project, you know, and and you know. it's like going on tour. Yeah, like yeah. They, they, the whole first ten minutes is like we're going on tour. <laughs> we're filming each other. This and, is fun. You got your snacks, cool man. And finally, yeah, we ran out though. Whoop. You kind of you kind of get to that through that first day, if you will. Yeah. And um and and you, you've got you've got everybody picked up. It's Phew. it's very much like that actually, and it's it's very interesting and it's very calm and it's very. There's a lot of excitement going on, and you get to the, you know, that hotel room. Yep. Well, right. Uh, one thing I want to say before that is when when he do, when they do pick up Mike, like Josh yeah. is late or whatever, they do pick up Mike, and he's the the audio guy, you know. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and he's Josh's friend apparently, and he was just kind of like a throw in. And Heather is just meeting him, you know, just now. And it's like, oh, here's here's uh, Mike coming out, and don't we get to meet your mom? It seems it seems really early in the morning, and it seems like he just woke up. There's a there's a shot of him. Where he's in the back seat and he's like, "I'm uh, thank you for this opportunity. I'm really excited to actually." Right, and right. He, like right. looks out the window and he's like, <sighs> "Like, like you do like when you wake up, you know." It seems everything, every reaction just seems so fucking human in this man. It immerses you, immerses me. I will say, to the point where I'm, I, I will say that I like emotionally invested in these characters yeah. on this on this watch around. Well, Sean, I agree. It's because they did it right. Like if if you start reading about how they filmed this, they basically said, "Okay, guys, <clears throat> here's the gist, but we're going to. I want you to just react like you would, and we're going to start giving you ideas and stuff." When they go to the townspeople, yeah, they they okay. So they these three people were told that the Blair Witch is a real legend. Some of them, right? Some of no, them no, no. Sorry, sorry, no, no. The the three, the, the three. Oh, sorry, sorry. The okay. three main, main kids were told that it was a legend, so they believed that it was actually a real thing. Yes. Obviously, this was made up and fake, uh, but like they didn't know until the film after the film came out that it was completely made up mythology. So here they are believing that it's real. Then they're going to this town and they're told to literally just start talking to people and see if they'll talk to you. And then the crew planted actors. That's right. <laughs> into the into these groups of people walking around the streets in hopes that they would basically run into each other. Yeah. And then they could implant the ideas they already had on top of the film mythology. All of the lore. Yeah. And and so you really are. These people are seriously like hearing this stuff and being like, oh fucking shit. Yeah. And they're reacting to it. There's no script to this movie. This this whole mythology is done. Within 10, 15 minutes. Yep. And then they're in the forest. Think about they're how there. well you, that has you, to be done. You have it all, like right then and there. Like you have the, like you're, you're invested. I am creeped the fuck yep. out by a, a random person on the street telling me a, a story about a witch. I'm creeped out Don't like already. It. You know, and like some of them, some of them were genuine. Like some of them were even just like, they went up to people and were like, "Hey, what do you think about the Blairish?" And they were just—they just, they just they wanted just to talk. Went off. They just wanted to talk, so they just said, "Like, well, you know, I—I I, I heard this about, the, not even knowing anything about it, you know." It, it, and then they have plants. Wasn't one of the main interviewees like? Didn't they just make up? I some think it's stuff the on lady the, with the baby. Yep. Is that who and, it was? And, and how fucking perfect film we talk about our lettuce <laughs> moment. This is a lettuce moment. W- to have a a little kid. Put his hand over his mom's mouth when she starts talking about a witch, and like basically be like, "No, don't talk about that. Yeah, don't talk about don't that." Talk, oh, yeah. How? Man. What? You don't. You get that, and you go, "Oh my god, how did we get that?" Like this, you can't recreate that moment. Be like, "Okay, kid. Hey, dumbass little kid, put your hand over her mouth when she like, says." Would this. you ever go out in the forest? I don't go out there. It's it's I, so I, good. I really, <laughs> I, you, it does really show. Like, or, you know, it tells you such an appreciation. For the front load of production work that went into this, before yeah. and of of the few people who were genuinely involved, of the directors and the production, uh, the producers themselves, to go out and front load this and get those people planted in the into this world, so that way without no, them knowing, correct? Too. And Jesus. Then, and then you you the the other end of this, like let's 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 take another step back really fast and just say or talk about the the three cast members mm-hmm. right yes please and they um those three people after their interviews that we kind of mentioned a little bit about they had to basically sign waivers about how you like look we are basically able to put you in uncomfortable situations <laughs> make you second guess some things like that's our job and this is your job you're not gonna get mad at us. and they're literal they literally had a safe word 
that they what? all had to Remember yell out collectively Let's in, in three. order to stop it, this madness from happening. Three, two, one. Taco. Taco. <laughs> Great safe word. It's yeah. such a good safe word. I think word. that should be ours from here I on out. I think that's our safe word. <laughs> like, if you don't like the way a bit's going, you just <laughs> yeah. go taco. No, taco, We're just man. Gonna taco. Ta- no, taco. taco. Come out. Uh, like, Logan, Logan, you keep that in mind, yeah. too. As, yeah. as producers, like, a taco. Oh, hey. sh- a taco. Uh, Logan's listening to a podcast. He doesn't know what's going on. <laughs> so... So, but but that's that's the other thing is that the they are they are literally quite they 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 were put into the situation and their characters were even supposed to have different names. Yep. Yeah. But they actually decided to keep their actual names for honest reaction and feedback. Their parent they went so far that the parents received like sympathy cards Correct. after this movie came out. Correct. That doesn't the the thing you got to understand is this cannot happen today ever again. No, this I will don't never it, happen I, one time. Ever I, I, I again. don't believe it could. I don't, I really don't believe it could. It's not. They, they, there's too much cynicism on the internet today, and too much information at your finger, fingertips. Someone would they'd be like, okay, we did it. Well, I think we covered all of our bases. Here's the thing: within five seconds, of being not true. Fuck that. Boom, 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 yeah. boom. Here's all that evidence. Like, like maybe some maybe nerd would f- figure it out in a second. Be like, yes, dumb. Maybe the maybe, AI. Maybe there'll be <laughs> yeah, exactly. Maybe there'll be some version of like the AI revolution or yeah, something yeah. like that 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 could do this. But like. <sighs> There's no, I mean, obviously not human. This is so human. And I, what I love about these actors, man, is that they are so human and they are kind of just playing themselves, you know? But like, yeah. you have to keep in mind, too, but like, we will get to them in the forest, but like, they are making a movie, you know? They are, it's right. The directors didn't shoot a damn thing, they shot everything. Not so only like, are they having to get through this, but they're also having to fucking they make, trust them. They make the they movie. They have to trust them. They gave, Once they stepped into those woods, they were at a disconnect of at least, bare minimum, probably a half a mile. Yeah. Bare minimum. And, like, that's that was the level of, one, trust. <laughs> this could have been a disaster. 100%. But, but then they also, and they also have to trust that they will stay in character Mm-hmm. throughout this process and also continue to film what they're supposed to film even right. against their uh characters um thoughts that's what i'm kind of getting at is that they they are in character but also like it's so easy to get out of character when you're just annoyed on set you Correct. know like like if you're annoyed on set we could, I, I could just be like hey i actually have to go to the bathroom right now can we just cut real quick and like, <laughs> well, like that just happened before the before we got into this you know and they they can't do that they yep. have to stay in it every time they are filming and no matter whether it's positive or negative they've got to stay in it and, and you know take both take both sides of it in the in the hotel they filmed so much in that yes. hotel and they got wasted they got wasted brother <laughs> They were so like they got drunk. They got like very like like let their inhibitions just go. Just, just like oh man, having a grand old time. Same exact thing. That was all probably very real. Oh yeah, to a degree. And then and then on top of that, then you take them outside of that, and then you move them out into the woods. Especially after meeting those fishermen and whatnot, and and you're letting them, trusting them to go and stay in character, and then get basically upset and trust them to film themselves getting upset. Yeah. yeah. Man, that's tough. We have to talk about Mary Brown, the yeah, like, we one, definitely one of the most oh, sure. credible witnesses in this movie and like it's an, an actress but like kind of thought she was like legit about all this. It's hard to not get creeped out by this lady because yes. she looks like a witch. Oh yeah, she really does. And she like, got that strong jaw, you know, like holding a couple Bible, rounds of Tyson, yes. clenching you a know? Bible. You're just like, like her, I don't like this wooden made gate, you know. Ooh. Um, <laughs> like I, oh, that'll keep them out. Shot it. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, I rubbed it with garlic. <laughs> it's like what? I'm cooking it later too. Don't worry, there's salt around the yard. But uh, you like even the shot of her with the with the CP. Uh, camera, the film camera is out of focus, and yeah. you, can, you can even tell like it adds to it. But it was even on; it wasn't on purpose to do that. It was because Josh Lucas, Josh Lucas, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Joshua Leonard, who was actually filming, like didn't like he said he knew how to work cameras, but he really didn't like. And then the the part where they're saying, uh, "Well, this is in the lenses and meters," like that's why it was out of focus. Uh. It was a real thing, you know. Like I don't know it that. Her whole kind of creepy speech is like, and, and it was like fur, like like a weird like, fur. Like fur. 
it's uh, just can, it adds so much. You cannot build a a, a more perfect legend yep. than like eyewitnesses telling you this story. Like uh, you, what you'll see in the fog if you if you've watched it or it not. It was it came up last night on my my uh, oh remember okay. to do this. Okay, so I'm ready. So once you like there is a person who tells a backstory and it's just Man. like I got it. Okay, I got it all. Well, can can we can we? Well, I'll ask for your. Uh, appreciation of this. Can we probably say that this movie is borderline like four fifths lettuce moment? I yeah. I'm gonna say this like I wanted to wait till the end, but may I'll say it now. This whole movie is a lettuce. It's a lettuce. This moment. whole movie. You, you, it's a lettuce drop. It's a miracle. This movie exists. Yeah. It's a miracle. This movie did what it did. And I that's uh, you. And maybe I guess, maybe we get can my cut rating down on that. My excitement right now. You'll get my rating. But like, shh, shh, uh, shut up, Sean. <laughs> I'm just saying, is this a is is a lot of this yeah. movie a bit of a lettuce drop? I agree, hundred percent. I think there is, but we also have to admit, like we the, the the way we like to do that, if this were real, and let's say they were they were never killed by the Blair Witch or whatever, and they made it out with all their footage, this would have been the shittiest fucking documentary I've ever seen. <laughs> because the they, student film, this yeah. this student film would have been pure <laughs> dog shit. Even my wife commented on it. She's like, she's like, this is fuck. Why won't she shut up when she's interviewing these people? Yeah, she's the worst. She is a interviewer. bad interviewer. She she just keeps saying what they say and like and 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 they're trying to say things and she keeps interrupting them on top of a camera just going. Blah, 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 oh my god! In and out of focus. I'm so glad you just brought me back to reality. Actually, because we were getting pretty hyped there we for were. a moment. <laughs> this is the <laughs> most dog shit documentary. You know what? I've ever you're 100 percent right because I remember thinking that several times. It's like you are leading the witness basically in this entire process. And her voice of like. Hmm. There are so many children that she like speaks from the diaphragm. Yes. Oh yeah, like, like, it's very serious. This is bad. When she does the uh, when she does the uh, the narration, yes, kind of talks. Yes. She does that narration talk, and you're just like, yeah, I I don't believe you. This is the most like unbelievable part of this entire movie. Hundred percent. Yeah, you talking at me and leading your your expert your local witnesses. You're right. That's a hundred percent true. The best thing she's to happen, bad at this. She's the best bad. thing to happen to your Blair Witch project was you guys dying. <laughs> <laughs> this this made way more money than your stupid student oh, film would have made. You know what? Thank like, you for sacrificing yourself. Thank you so much for going Kurt Cobain on this shit because <laughs> oh man, it was it was. Uh, yeah, we're speaking of the times. Of the times, right? Of the I, times. I'm just saying, so, grunge, that was only five 1999. Years prior. <laughs> It's whatever, right? Like if Sublime had the resurgence. <laughs> well, listen, skunk records. Be, before boys, before we go on to scene two, we got to talk about the most important thing that they did not pack in their backpack. Yeah. When you go out to the woods, the cigarettes only thing you need is cigarettes and Cedar Ridge whiskey. Thank, Thank you. you. Like it, here, and here's the thing: Cedar Ridge whiskey not only is going to give you that warm, it's going to warm you up by the fire on those cold nights. But it's also going to let you pass the fuck out when there's <laughs> witch sounds happening in the woods. Please woods. and thank you. Whenever I, I hate camping, I hate it. That's why I hate this movie so why much. Like it I scares me. Why up. are you making a drink, man? We just we just saw a ghost. What the fuck else am yeah, I gonna I do? I need to go to sleep. I don't know. I'm not <laughs> saying that you need to unresponsibly drink Cedar Ridge whiskey, but if you go in the woods. You're going to drink a lot of whiskey. You might as well pick the best whiskey in the world, Cedar Ridge yeah. whiskey. You could just bring the flagship bourbon with you just to chug it, or maybe you got a nice little spread in your backpack. You got some ice cubes, and you got the glasses, and maybe you brought yeah. some little bitters, make it old-fashioned. Yeah. Or just, you know what, bring the American Quintessential single ball with you. Hey, you got the demons out there? Church it up with the Quintessential. Church it up with the best Quintessential single yeah. malt that has ever been made. Yeah. Or, dude, you want to combat the demons of the forest with demons of music. Ooh. Bring the Slipknot. Bring your collaboration with Slipknot. Number fire nine. with fire, baby. Fight Get fire it. with fire. We're telling you, we've been talking about Cedar Ridge whiskey forever. They are hands down. I know your I know your local town's probably got like a young up and coming distiller. It's like <laughs> we yeah. make whiskeys. Nobody's as good as Cedar Ridge. They're from Iowa. They are growing to be worldwide, winning awards all over the place. Check them out. Order a bottle straight to your door. Ask a local distributor to get them for you. Check more out at cedarridgedistillery.com. Even Heather in the in the hotel room is like, I fucking hate scotch. She's like, well, you wouldn't. <sighs> Not if you had quintessential. Come Nobody on. likes Cedar Ridge Distillery.com. Cedar Ridge Distillery.com.
Scene two, boys. The team heads into the forest to research the myth, starting with Coffin Rock location. They camp for the night and the next day find an old graveyard with seven small cairns, one of which Josh accidentally knocks over. That night, they hear strange noises in the woods. But speaking of Heather and her like uptightness about the film, I really do like the fact that she that they do involve like her filmmaking aspect to it you know like her like i have a vision i want to get it i want to get everything you know i want to i want to film everything i want to film everyone's reaction i want to film this want to film that it's her dedication to it it's her very very much so dedication and it does add to like the the age-old like argument of like why do they keep filming in in found footage movies it's like well, there's that aspect, and then an aspect we will get to much later when things kind of fall apart. Yeah. I'll tell you right now that, like, I, I've, I've mentioned it maybe in some Patreon episodes or something. Like, my brother and I took a trip to Belgium, and, like, there were some very frustrating moments. I kind of wish I was filming during those yeah. moments. Like, because I took. Because you would have gotten out of it and been like, cool. I would have filmed. I filmed a lot of stuff during that time, just little tidbits here and there, and I took a lot of pictures. But I really wish I would have gotten some of those more, like, frustrating moments. And I think this is that kind of testament. Because nobody it's thinks like, they're going to die here. No, like They're no. all like, we're going to get out of here and we're going to have this footage. We're yes. still camping for a couple of days. Yeah. And that's she it. says it right in this moment or in these moments yep. of like, you know what? Because eventually we're going to look back on this. We're going to laugh. Mm -hmm. And that's what it's going to be. That's we, a moment that wouldn't even have been doc or, or involved in the end game. It would have been the, huh? it would have been the bloopers. Yeah. Right. You're but right. we would have laughed. All now right. at this point, it's part of this documentary of this found footage. We got it. Let's just get it out of the way. Let's talk about Heather in general. Cause like, I feel, I feel really bad for Heather Donahue because she got a Razzie for the worst actress uh, in this movie. Ugh. She was faced with considerable backlash as a result of this role, threatening encounters, difficulty finding other employment. Like people hated her so much in this movie. If you pull a hundred people on the street to be like, who what was the worst part of Blair Witch? 99 would tell you Heather. Yeah. Wow. And and she, in fact, had to retire from acting uh because she just couldn't get another job. And half of me feels really bad for her because that's bullshit. Like, but the question remains: was she just so good at acting that she created a character that is just so fucking terrible like no one likes this character did she create that or was that really just her and and, and like unfortunately we don't like her as a person you know I've, like i found her character very very sympathetic i mean i know like the filmmaker in me was like yeah i want to get this i want to get this on camera get this on camera like that aspect as well but like even just like the heartfelt thing like we will get like so much later in the film but like her one shot of yep. her face yep. you know that was all of her that was all yep. her I think there's a point where we have always talked about this is if you love to hate somebody, it means that they gave you a great performance. Correct. But and that's where I'm questioning, like, is like, that really was that a performance? But yeah. if you it's if, it's rough. If it makes you feel uneasy, it's probably a good thing. You know, like if it makes you feel like, well, you just shut up. Like if picture like someone a, a, like a couple of people having an argument in the background that you really like, you know, that you really love. Will you guys just shut the fuck up for a minute? Like you got, you're being dumb. You're being dumb. Just reconcile real quick. That is the epitome of like what she's doing. You know? Mike, I think I have a rationalization for the way you're feeling. And it is number one. She like, I'm, I'm going to break the fourth on this. Okay, the fourth okay, wall okay, okay. Is, is the fact that she is in fact like a very young actress and very yeah. excited to be a part of this like project that could be, something very special Maybe a thing. and she actually has some really wonderful qualities but then at the at the same point she is given such little direction in her role based on exactly what this movie is supposed to be okay that she can't contain some of the bullshit that she's putting out during the interviews and also during like the make what could potentially be overacting in these yeah. moments yeah. of of uh anxiety Kind That's what I mean. That's what I kind of want, um, what I'm kind of getting at. I think what you're seeing is real frustration yeah. of like being tired and hungry and frustrated. But I think it's also a combination of her combining this with I am supposed to be this way as an as this character. They did they did give her direction. Right. With with your with your note there. They did like they're like the caches of of Correct. little notes here and there and they would they would like every now and again be like Taco and be like, "Hey, 
you, yeah. you need to cool it a little bit. Like sometimes she would be like really like way harsher than she, mm-hmm. than she should have been on on Mike and and Josh. And they would have to like pull her aside and be like, "Hey, tone it back a little bit. We need a little bit more sympathy for your character." It's just that that we've all met that person before where they are they're, they're the alpha. Yeah. They have to be the person, but yeah. they don't know anything. And she knows nothing. She is a terrible filmmaker. She knows nothing about reading maps. She can't admit when she's wrong. Uh, that's, and yet, that's what it is. She cannot admit when she's wrong, and she just cannot like relinquish control. And that's why I like Mike so much. Well, I think you're. I, I think you're with. with an, you. I think you're with three and and uh, one overarching unreliable narrator. Yeah. Okay. And that's it. Yeah. They they are leading you down a road that that you cannot tell what's going to happen next because they don't know what's going to happen next. And yeah. They are just filming the experience. It is that moment uh, that she is supposed to be the leader and she she knows she's supposed to be the leader like you're saying, Mike, and she can't give up she the can't idea. Just be like, hey guys. Hey, I I need some feedback here. She I need can't. I need some more here. I need some help here. And she doesn't want to admit that. It is. Oh my gosh! It's literally the dad who doesn't want to accept directions. Yes, <laughs> and and that's what and that's why I like Mike the most because he yeah. he will call he calls her out for for like being like listen like I, I'm I'm being honest with you I know nothing about this map this looks foreign to me but I'm gonna I you say you do so I'm gonna trust that I you do I signed up for a I, scouted yes that film it. thing yeah but I, I don't trust yeah. I don't trust that you're being honest I'm I'm going to tell you right now I don't trust that you know. And Mike and Mike continues to be, I don't know. I mean, maybe this changes as we move on. But even then, when he talks about that first night they're getting fucked with, and and he's like, I'm not getting. I'm like, I wasn't gonna leave the tent. And she's like, Well, why? And he says, Well, first of all, we're so deep in the woods. If those are people fucking with us, I don't want to fuck with them. Oh, and by the way, if it's not people fucking with us, I don't want to fuck with that. I don't want to fuck with that either. Equally, don't want to fuck with that. These these are the moments that scare the fucking shit out of me. You put yourself, you can be like, oh, whatever. I probably like you guide. If you're in the middle of the woods and that is happening to you, you can go fuck yourself. Mike is the rational one. Josh is the in between of, yep. of him and Heather, and Heather is the unbearing, yes. unrational one, being like, "We need oh, to do it for art." I'm super sorry that I don't want to go outside the tent at this location of literally called Gravestone Location. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, you just decided to call it Coffin Rock. <laughs> no, it's Gravestone Location. <laughs> it's a it's Gravestone. That and that story, by the way, of Coffin Rock is. Like it's sort of glossed over. That is a terrifying. So the search story. party looking for the search party went out to look for the search party <laughs> and got murdered. Yes. Oh, weird. And, and then people out. found them. Basically, human that centipeded. Party, yeah. And then they left, and they came back, and it was all gone. And, and they never found them these, again. It was these piles of rocks for mm-hmm. the seven people that went out. There were seven piles of and rocks. Going no back, problem. Going back to these fishermen, I think it, like there's something so scary about like, and I know that one of them is like the um, rational one of the fishermen, and the other one's like, oh, I, I heard a story there was, right down there. I saw yeah. something <laughs> creepy. But he does. Y'all want to go down that road? Yeah. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> <Like> pet cemetery. <laughs> he also seems like someone who doesn't believe, but he kind of he's in it a little bit. Yeah. There's something about someone who's telling a story that you know is a skeptic about all this stuff, but also yeah. being like, well, yeah, but I can't really explain that though. <laughs> that makes it ten times more scary. Hundred um, percent. One other thing too, they have a shot right before they go in the woods of the car and they, they've all left the car and it's, it's just the car and it's just there is a moment where it's just there there no one's talking it's just the car of them and it's backing into the forest and then cut and they're in the forest that's it yep that is all of that is the rest of the car they're ever going to see in their entire life it's so cool I, why'd I, they leave the water bottle on top of the car yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fucking teenagers, man. They're, idiots, they're still college students. Oh man, I left my coffee on top of the car and uh, drove away. Uh, you're right, man. Like that's it. They, it's that moment of uh, going out to play with your friends for the last time and not knowing it. That was yeah. the last time they were ever going to see civilization and not know it. Yeah. yeah, I mean, the, so like the, the these scares at night. Um, it's just the worst. And this is so. This is it's the first just one. the worst. It's like I don't know. I heard. I kind of heard a cackling. Like I don't know. You know, no big deal. You yeah. Know? Can they're, I? There's trying to be tough at this point. Is was this the children or was this not? The no. Children? This not is yet. just. This is just. They heard noises. Fantastic. And no big deal. In fact, some of them didn't even hear it. 
There you go. Well, let's move on then. Well, I, Split, okay, yeah. Yeah, let's move on. Okay, yeah. so scene three. The following day, they try to hike back to the car but cannot find it before dark and make camp. They again hear strange noises in the woods. In the morning, they find that three cairns have been built beside their tent. Heather learns her map is missing. Mike reveals he kicked the map into a creek out of frustration, which provokes a fight between the trio as they realize they're lost. I'll say that um, Heather Donahue was done pretty dirty with this movie, but I, I'll also say that Mike Williams is the best performance in this movie. Do you think so? Oh, wow. I think so. I like. I do like Josh a lot. Yeah, uh, but he's, I, he's I th- gone on to a more illustrious career rather than yeah, these but two. but I feel like Mike does kind of... He's sort of the everyday guy, sort of like I feel like we can all most relate to him. Maybe? I don't. Yeah, I, he's honest. He plays it. I don't know. He plays it so real. I think he plays it the realest. Like yeah. it, you could, you can maybe make some marks on Josh and Heather, maybe. And I don't, I don't really support any of that. He he plays his character really, really well. Mike does, but the problem I have, and I think that this honestly comes back to a different part of this. Is Mike Mike he bounces from one end of the spectrum to the other a lot from being completely frustrated and upset to being a almost moderator mm-hmm. between the other two. And I think the reason that this happens is because during the production, we find out well, uh, if you, I don't know if you guys read this or not, but Joshua and Heather had the most yeah. contention, like they had mm-hmm. the most adversity between the two of them. That they were they were the ones battling most of the time, that they had to yell taco, 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 and basically say, "Hey, uh, jo- you have to back off of Heather. Josh, you're the middle guy here. You're 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 like you're doing too much. Like at this point, like you're getting pissed. But also to Heather, like for also, but also going too hard on, on yeah. Josh. Yeah, on and Josh. so so they had a lot. And turns out there was a lot of footage." Um, during the production that was actually cut of them because they were the ones that were bickering so mm-hmm. much and they had to make it as they had to make it so that Mike seemed to be the one who was at ends with yep. Heather. Yep. You know? There was there was even there was even plot points that had to change because of this th- this a thing. Mike was the one who was supposed to disappear. That's right. Oh damn, really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh shit! And, and, okay, and, but then oh, they, they made took it, Josh they just took to be like, Josh. get him out of here. They did. They, no they way. T- they took him out of it because they're like, gosh, it's getting almost unbearable. Which would have made sense for the Josh uh, Heather love story then, probably that they yeah. were the last two yeah. ones together. Okay, very true. Well, wow. and you got to keep in mind too of, of just of the production literally <laughs> fucking creeping on these guys, Ugh. like uh-huh. uh, maybe not even a mile away or anything, just being like. Talking with each other, I mean, like, okay, so how do we structure this? What do we do next? You know, we we know we want to get them there. It's like they're writing it as as this uh, uh, th- these performances are unfolding, you know, and it's that's so cool. It's like this whole like that's what I'm saying. This whole movie is a is a lettuce moment. Like it's it really it really is, is. and like they they are playing off of what what's what's best going to serve the story and what's unfolding that we don't know is going to unfold in front of our eyes, you know, and they're molding that. As it happens, and and think about being one of the editors, directors, producers, whoever that's like reviewing this footage and starting to realize these things, because they they can hear it maybe off in the distance at points, but they aren't watching the film. So you have to realize that like they're taking this back maybe every night. Mm-hmm. I'm I have to assume to at least do reviewing some, it yeah. to do some footage review, um, and honestly think to themselves like. <sighs> Wow, how are we supposed to work with this? Yeah. Or wow, this is perfect. We can work with this. Because it's also like they are hearing and seeing what's going on, like in a play, but they're not watching what's on frame. And right. that changes your perspective Correct. 100%. That's yeah. why we talk about all the time with like Steven Spielberg just being this like professional, like the, the, the godfather of framing and manipulating and, your and thoughts, manipulating your, your views and your thoughts based on the camera angle, right? So. I think that's a, I think that's really fascinating um, to that that they I, and I think it's maybe one of the most unique ideas of filmmaking is that they didn't honestly know what they were going to get back at the end of the night and they had to work with it. They saw mm-hmm. the dailies the next day. They saw they? the dailies. Like, well, <clears throat> and I'm sure that affected where their storyline was going from the next day. Hundred percent. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Well, I mean, like, improv- improvising on on the spot, being like, well. 
Josh is the one that's got to go. Because hey, we, you know what? We got to we got to change this. We got to get Josh out. Well, of here. it's okay because apparently Josh wanted to make it to a uh, Jane's Addiction concert that night. Anyway, <laughs> <so. laughs> that's, <amazing. Dude, laughs> that's what I'm He's saying, like, man. Fuck I us. I'm so out Jacob of Givens wet oh, dream, shit, dude. dude. Yeah. Jacob <laughs> Givens wet dream. <laughs> Jacob saying. Givens. If you have not met Josh, oh. you guys got to hang out. I think yeah. it'd be great. I think you, Jacob and Josh would just be. I think they'd make some great content. Let's be real, <laughs> um, dude. Yes, but also we've got Mike. Who he's gonna be? This is this this moment for me is one of the most um, like burned in images for me of this movie is Mike laughing about this map. Mm. It makes sense though. Like I feel like we've all been in that moment before of this of this stressful moment. Like you you put me in the middle of this. You put me into Mike's shoes, and I'm just he- dude. I'm just here. Like I think I want to make films. I think I want to be involved in the industry. I just signed up for this. I don't really like. This Heather girl, Josh is kind of my friend, and you're in a place where you're not comfortable. I don't like, I'm not a camping guy. Like, I don't want to camp deep in the woods. And I'll watch camping videos on YouTube where somebody's in the middle of nowhere and they're getting fucked with. A couple days camping, that's fine. But, like, if Uh, I didn't prepare for four or five days. Right. And, And you're just, you're up and down in your emotions, and you realize that, these people don't even they, they told you they know what they're doing and they don't. Yeah. You have a moment of just like you're low on food. You, know, you just like, fuck it. This map sucks. Boop. And you just do it. And you actually kind of feel relief in that moment of just being yeah. like, hey, you know what? Fuck this shit. Because I had control over a moment. And yes. That's the thing. That's the thing I'm going to say about the cameras right now is like it, when Josh says, you know, uh, I, I know what you I know why you're filming this whole yeah. time because it you you. You can kind of control the moment within within this frame, you know. Oh, I think dude. that's such a perfect and will never be an excuse ever again for a found footage movie, ever. Yep. Because this one did it. It's like this: you can control what you're seeing through a, the the frame of the of the camera huh. rather than what you're seeing and what's happening to you. You know, like it's almost like you don't have to you don't you don't have to experience your peripheral vision exactly. And he says it's not quite it's reality. not quite reality. Yeah, uh, that's fucking great. Well, let me ask you this, boys. So there's there's a upon this rewatch, there's a word that is said in this movie so many times that I just am like Blair Witch Project. Why do you have to use this word so many times? Do you know what word it is? Is it man? Is it's it fuck. It's not. It's not fuck. It's man. In fact, the word man was said 67 times in this man. movie, which has to be second to only Days Big and Confused. Well, so let's put it third. Oh, I'm sorry. You're right. Let's put it third. Big Lebowski was like 150 times. Days and Confused was like 100, 60 whatever times in this movie. That is a lot of mans. It is. Dude, they're like, hey, man, whatever, man. It kind of got to me on this rewatch. I'm just trying like, to get out of this force. That's all I'm trying to do, too, man. Man. That's all I'm trying to do, too. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I it's it's when you think about it, I'm like, yeah, it's either it's either like fuck or fuck's man. quite a bit, but man, yeah, there's well, a lot of mans in this movie. There's something soothing about that, or or it almost um, it, it's uh, oh man, I don't want to take it like too deep or anything, <laughs> man, but like um, uh, if you ever if you ever get onto like stage or doing like an improv thing and people start to like say the f word a lot, yeah. Like it's a comfort thing. It it's, is. It's, it's a crutch. It's, a, it's, it's a crutch. Um, it's a and like. It, it's, it's a, a it's a little bit of shock to it, and there's there's something that takes you from where you were before to getting to the next point by using an f bomb, right? And man can be that too. It's the same thing of like, like, um, like. Yeah. I do that a lot, and it's just it's fine. But there is a point where. It, it almost kind of breaks you out of it, it. It tends to break your mind out of uh, the situation at hand. Yep. And maybe that's maybe that's a thing for them. But as an audience, I do know what you're saying. I recognize it, and you're kind of like, Ugh, okay. And one more thing on on the Heather. Like I again, I always feel bad that I'm on this side, but this is a this map kicking moment is a thing for me where this is the type of person I just don't like to be around. Where this person Heather has been wrong the whole time. She won't admit that she's wrong. And now that finally Mike has done something uh-huh. to kick the map away, now she can lose her shit to be like, I knew where I was. I yeah. And she didn't know where she was. She that really map didn't. was fucking useless. It was it was useless to them. It was useless in but pretty now much she can, 
any of their hands. Yes, and, and you're now right. she can actually take the high road to be like, well, you, what did you do? You did this. I, I was not wrong. This. You did. I could flip The this. map was another form of control for her, like yes. the cameras are. Yes. That's right. Uh, I, I completely agree with you. Um, there is a point where somebody can take this, and even though you've been wrong in everything that you've yes. been expressing, you you see somebody else do something wrong, and you can at least <laughs> expend, expel some of this blame yep. onto them. Yep. Yeah. yeah take the focus right. off of you and put it on somebody else. And Mike did something wrong, but at least he and he, owned then he it. Owned, and then he said, "I'm sorry too." He's yeah. like, "I'm sorry. I just he, fucking did it." I'm he sorry. owned it. There's a there's a moment too where they before a lot of this argument happens where they're like, and it's before they kind of realize what's that they're they might be fucked, um, is where uh, such a human moment and such a realism moment to me is where like I I gotta get the debt back, I, b- b- before <laughs> dude, like we have, I love right. that we have to turn the 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 stupid cameras in <laughs> we have to like these were free I have to get them back or else I can to charge get, fifty dollars we have to get them back or, or I will lose like a little bit of credit on this or something yeah. like they're still thinking about their mundane job Steve is gonna use this for his project and tomorrow stupid teachers you yes. know they're still thinking about that and it's like they're one day of way. From not thinking about that yes. whatsoever. Oh, you know? Sean, you're so right, it's dude. It's so creepy. It's, it's so eerie, dude. They still have the the thought that they're gonna make it out of yes. this. Yes. It it adds a lot to it. The fact that us as an audience knows full well. Yes. By the way, you probably kind of forget that along you the way do. of the story, right? Did you guys? Yeah, they, they say, hey, these kids disappeared. Here's yeah, the that, footage. That is a moment of contention, too, where you're like, oh, they do need to get that back. Yeah. Like you, that is, you do think that. Like, that is very anxiety Are they going to get out of here? You know? Are it's, they going to find the road in the car? Yeah. It's a, it's a deadline. I mean, yeah. It's like, yeah, those those library <laughs> books are too bad. Dad? Oh, he does got to re- return those videotapes. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, like oh, you got to get those back. He's got to work Seven in the morning. Day rental. Yeah. That, he's that gonna, he's not going to make it do it. He can't even call in and say he was sick. My student, pro- yeah, it's like I have to. I have to work in the morning. I'm supposed to be at work at 9 a.m. in the morning. I got to be at Subway at 9 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a sandwich artist. The most- oh no, <laughs> dude! If I don't Who get the those, if I don't get that bread if I, onto that, <laughs> if I don't get the bread in the oven, we won't have bread for the whole day. Oh God! <laughs> you want that toaster or not? It's not gonna be toast without me. It's not gonna. Sean, <sighs> they didn't fucking toast back in '99. I'm so I was sorry. a sandwich I'm artist. So sorry. They I was a Subway sandwich artist in '99. It was still center cut, U uh. shape. <laughs> Uh, okay, there was no fucking toasting, dude. Cut, cut the old way, team. That's right. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. Oh, yeah, dog. Uh, I want out. that soggy piece of, like, like you know, uh, landing strip on top of my bread. <laughs> uh, that's what I definitely want. Uh, <laughs> but it didn't, like, she reassures them, too. She's like, we're going to get the dad back. We're going to get the cameras back. Don't worry about it. I know where we're going. It is a, it is a point of reassur- reassurance, too, of that <laughs> fact where you, as an audience member, feel kind of like a a minuscule amount of comfort because uh, she's right. We that. might. It might be a day late, but we'll get back. Yeah. I guess that's comforting. Yeah. My library books are due back. <laughs> well, let's move on to scene four, boys. So they decide to head south and discover stick figures hanging from the trees. They again hear mysterious sounds that night, including children laughing. After an unknown force shakes the tent, they hide in the forest until dawn. Upon returning to their tent, they find that their possessions have been rifled through and Josh's equipment is covered with slime. This moment, I have to make mention of this, okay? That these these uh, stick figure things. Great band. Stick figures? Yeah. All right, nice. All right, nice. cool. I'll check them out on my way home. Um, nice. It, it, it will help. It will so, help after the horror of this is over. Thank God. Very happy. Um. So when I was in the Boy Scouts, <laughs> there was a couple of different times that like everybody always made the jokes about like snipe hunting at night. And it was like it was I say like hazing. It wasn't really hazing. It was just like, hey, if you want to go, we're going to go out and do snipe hunting. And I then, don't like any of this. Dig yourself out of this. I'm going to yeah, try. Get out of this. Well, I can't. And so basically <laughs> we like some of well. I was younger at one point, so it happened to me, and then I was one of the older kids, so now I thought it was cool. I don't like any of that either. I, I really got to <sighs> It's terrible. And like basically you, you like we would make little uh scenarios and and make Blair Witch project mm-hmm. looking stick figures mm-hmm. and oh, okay. hang them in trees. Mm-hmm. And that's what we would do. And then we'd pull their pants oh, down. So- what the <laughs> fuck are you talking about? 
<laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> we pulled our pants down so the, the, the main guy could come over oh, and be like, yeah. oh. <laughs> No. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Here's your badge, AJ. So no. it was like it was like a paddle moment in Days of Confused. Kind of, but, but we didn't actually make any physical contact with them. It was just a I never up. had physical contact made with me. Jesus. The best part is you're making you're making stick figures and hanging them from the trees to to scare kids who have never ever been seen never Blair seen Witch. it and we're just like and we're like oh man what's that old oh, Jesus like oh, what's that it looks noise like a person and like somebody else's and we would like make little like half TP things are like, oh, this is an ancient Indian burial ground. Yes. Oh man, and then you'd have somebody else come out like, th- like twirling a a a, a glow Underwear. stick. Like no, like <laughs> shut up. <laughs> Doing a helicopter. Stop oh, it, Heather. And- yeah, knock it off, Heather. I am kind of the Heather of the group. Right? <laughs> Maybe that's but, why I hate her so much. Yeah, you just keep interrupting people and not letting them fucking finish thoughts. Uh, Anyways, uh, no, but like, God. like twirling around like a like a glow stick that they cracked, right? And it's like, oh yeah, and make a weird noise and kind of scare somebody, and that was it. And like, we would make the little stick figures and hang them in trees. Talking about actually and then being I'd think scared, about AJ. it. What's that? No, go ahead. I I and like there were moments like. I was fucking scared, and I was the one who set it up. Yeah, no, uh, dude, I, I want to talk about this. I, I'm serious. To. I want to talk about this. Like, I've been camping. I've been like camping with my uncles and and my you know uh, cousins and everything like that. And you would just make up legends, or you would make up like yeah. whatever. Like your uncles would be like, like my uncle was like the the the, the white buffalo was oh. out there, and it's like a scary like a Native American uh, legend that's gonna get you at night, you know? Yeah. And then like uh, meanwhile. The next day, we we'd be out like at the at the railroad track that would go through the campground, and we'd crush pennies as the you know the the train went by or whatever. It was a cool thing for us, but we were also scared to go out by ourselves because our fucking uncle told us about the white buffalo. Yeah, it's but it's so cool thinking about back back now, you yeah. know. But that's what I think about is like, th- but think about going out there and to a place that technically no one's ever been or yeah. no one has been in a long no time, one there. and all of a sudden you leave shit. <sighs> there is those stick figures I don't, hanging. This is the moment for me where I'm like, I I could get over the noises. Uh, this is where I'm like, that's we're we're fucked. Get the yeah. fuck out. We're but fucked at this point. It's what Get Mike says. Out. Like if it's if it's hillbillies fucking with us, I don't want to do with that. And if it's ghosts, I don't want to fuck with and, that either. And at this point, yeah. now he knows he ain't no rednecks making this shit. Yeah. And this is a moment where hundred. And so he now knows he's like, well, that's, this, we're fucked. This is a moment where where if. If I feel like if I was in this situation, it's like you guys have two minutes to make sure that you have everything that you want to take out of this forest. We are heading, we are running, we are we're going full speed. We are going as full speed as possible. We are as fast as the slowest person, but you will be motivated, and we are going on the on the on the direction of this stream, mm-hmm. and that's it. Because we will find our way out if we follow this river. We will, and that's it. And that's all that's going to happen at this point in time. And if you cannot keep up, then you will be motivated to keep up. Yeah. That's it. Get militant about this at yeah. this point. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. I we mean, sure as shit aren't it's stopping not about, to film this entire thing. It's not about <laughs> trying to film this, and it's not about me saying but, stop. To you need to stop filming. It's like if you haven't stopped filming and you decide to stay behind, we're leaving. I'm you. so sorry. If you're not with us, you're not with us. You're not with us. We're at this gone. Point. If you're not, if you're the slowest person, you're motivated, and if you can't be motivated, then you're left at this point. And so at this, and, and at this night, this is the scariest scene. Yep. Don't like it of the of maybe the oh, entire yeah. film. Like in, unless you want to talk about the end which is just like hearing voices when you're not supposed to like uh i i I brought it up in an episode one time i think i think the uh the shining where like you're in a hotel and it's just you and your family and you know no one's no one's supposed to be in this room or whatever and then you hear someone that's it. I don't like that. No, I don't like any you of this. You hear little kids in the middle of the forest. No, nope. you've been trekking for three, four days. Don't like yeah. it. It's not supposed to be there. And then the fact of the, like it will always the 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 burn in my memory will stay nope. of the hands I can't, slapping the tent. I can't I don't think I've been in a tent since 1999. I cuz I'm like I cuz I don't want to. Ugh. I'm gonna say right now man like this movie I I when I rewatch this movie I uh turned out all the lights I had my my Halloween lights going. Orange. Yeah, I, I had all my shit going man. I turned it out 
it's still fucking effective. Yes, it is. I don't care who you are, <laughs> the, especially this scene. It's still fucking terrifying. Dude, and the, the best part is that they didn't know this was gonna happen. It's all them. It's all the all the producers. The producers the showed up and fucking hands on the tent, and scared the shit out of them, and made them run out of the tent. They ran and, out. And same with the <laughs> child voices that were played. They played this over a loudspeaker boombox. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The the production crew. Bluetooth bow speaker. They they did. They put yep. a JBL yep. flip three yep. out there. Whatever would have given them money um, at the time. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, everybody and knows uh JVC. I think JBL sponsored it or something, you know. And so uh, <laughs> but no <laughs> so but they, they basically had this like boom box. I loved I love to think about like a nineties, eighties boom box that's just <laughs> with like, a generator. And they're just it's, like it's, quick. <laughs> it's John Cusack <laughs> holding it up. <laughs> The Blair Witch is holding this. Blair finger. Witch is holding it like John Cusack, <laughs> but but it's, but it's, it's the Blair this. Witch holding up holding up a boombox playing like witchy music like yeah. Ooh, witchy woman. woman. Yeah. No, I like, want dude. She's you. a black magic woman. <laughs> One Santana playing, and. It's, She's but, the witch queen. Actually, if you're talking, Orleans. if you're talking '99, it would have been like Limp Bizkit or something <laughs> like that. It, it was I did it all for the nookie. Come what? on, the hot dog flavored water. <laughs> Oh. And I, so, anyways, this is what's happening. Yes. to them, like basically, somebody's blasting Kid Rock, and that's what they have to deal with at this point because there's a lot of rock piles around. It. That's good. That's really connection. Good. Thanks, I like guys. it a lot. Thanks, Congrats. Guys. Anyways. Oh, thanks for drawing the connection, AJ, to your own joke. Oh, no, move on. So what I'm saying is, is that the fact that the cast didn't know this, I believe Mike went on record to say that this was like the most unnerving moment of the entire production. Because he's like children voices laughing, playing, like doing all this crap. Like I can hear them. I can hear them clearly. Like I can understand them to a degree. And that was the most unnerving point. And then all of a sudden, they're getting their tent just rattled to the ground, pretty much. And they need to—they're—they're they're jetting out. And so stop me, fight if I'm, or flight. Yeah, stop yeah. me if I'm wrong here. I remember specifically being able to like rewind the VHS and like kind of seeing something in, when she's like, "What the fuck is that? What the fuck is that?" We would always try to stop it to be like, <clears throat> "You think you know you... they—they they, if this were a real movie, you would have seen it. You would have seen it." And I remember being like, "Yeah, I think that's." There's like a shadow there, but of course not. Unfortunately, there's nothing. Yeah, there's nothing, and there was, and I guess there was. There was something, wasn't it? Like the producer in like a white sheet, just and like, like just like white, like <sighs> uh, uh, like long, long johns, johns and like yeah, like oh no, like a white uh, ski mask and everything, just like running along. And with I'll them. tell there's, you what, there's three versions of this that I heard yeah. and read. There's one, it was a woman, or white one, gown. one of the actresses in a white gown. Another one was a producer in like long johns and a ski mask, and another one had like pantyhose or something on their head. Nope, don't like running any of around those. and doing the same thing with like long john white underwear all over their body. But are you happy that you didn't see it? So happy, yeah. And it's a mistake. They were supposed to capture it. Like whoever was behind Heather was supposed to turn. Josh, it was Josh, Josh. and like here, look. See it now. We're moving. Let us know. And I, yep. I I'm, think I'm cool with it. Out with it not happening. This this whole movie is e- about. Is that? the the uh fear of imagination the like the, the fear where, where you said in the beginning of this episode i believe or it's just like you whatever you picture she's yelling at <laughs> is worse than what we they all would have we all have it in our heads yes. we know that there's something like, what the fuck is, like what yeah. what is that and in her yeah. voice it's terrifying it's yes. terror in her voice as well as the as as well as the two other guys yeah. that are involved as well and you go know, fucking go go fucking go yeah. get, get like get out of here like it is fight or flight mode and it's the epitome of that and i i also um i also have to believe that since they since they didn't see this and since it never it, it was never seen you get to ima- basically imagine it yep way worse than whatever that's what sean yes. said it, you're right 100 percent you know, I was reading right what he said. No, I know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah I. Uh, no, that's what I said. Uh, wait, who said? <laughs> no, what? we agree with Mike. <laughs> yeah, Taco. <I> <laughs> but on top of that, too, I, I like another moment I really love when they get like they get to their like base camp of what or running away from their tent, you know. And she's like, "Did you hear that baby?" He's like, "There's no fucking baby out there, man. There's no fuck." You it's, talk yourself out. Everything of it. is so real, like that. It sounds like I want to cry right now. Uh, it just sounds like such a genuine reaction. And I care for these characters so much at this point. I'm like, I'm so terrified for them. And then there's a moment for Josh. You know, Josh. Josh has already got those thoughts creeping in his head. He's the one that hit the fucking pile of rocks. Yeah. 
and now his shit has been strewn about. No one else's. He's got blue fucking slime on his shit. No one else's. This is when, if I were Josh, I'd be like, well, that's it. Who are you going to call? You, I'm just going to sit here. You guys, <laughs> might, you guys, might, you guys might want to take off. It's true, though. <laughs> Who are you going to call? They would have had cell phones. You fucker. <laughs> Who are you going to call? Well, <laughs> well, well, well. Find your said. fucking nails. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you going to call? Look, me? look. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> Guys, we're moving on to scene five. Right, let's okay. do it. Let's Last do it. scene. <laughs> After hiking all day, they enter in the same spot again to camp as it gets dark. Josh vanishes the next morning, and Heather and Mike try in vain to find him. That night, they hear Josh's agonizing cries. The next day, Heather discovers a bundle of twigs tied with fabric from Josh's shirt. That night, they hear Josh calling out to them and follow his voice to the abandoned ruins of the house where Mike and Heather are presumably killed. This is another point that I, I just realized now that you read this out, is that is another thing that somebody else did during like the Boy Scout like snipe oh, no. hunting thing. Is like One of the older scouts just ran out into nowhere where and would just scream <laughs> and you're and it freaked me out like and i, I was involved in so this you knew it was coming i this knew is, it was happening this is also what i want to talk about because i, li I listened to the uh, director's and producer's commentary on, on this movie and their experience of trying to freak these guys out is still scary you know like one of them was like I, I gotta be honest, with you guys. Like being out there, even like trying to scare these guys, was still a little freaky. Just because we're well, out sure. in the woods you, in the dark. You, you know, know the moment when you're kids when you're doing like ghosts in the graveyard or something. Yeah, yeah. And exactly. you're Same and you're thing. the one like you're the antagonist trying to scare someone else, but you have that moment where you realize you're, you're like, alone. Oh, I'm all by myself. Yeah. Yes. That's what's happening, dude. I would like every like, don't like it. I would talk about uh, I've I've talked about before on the show like watching uh, horror movies or like uh, 100, 100 scariest movie moments on Bravo. And then my mom would get home from work, and I knew she was getting home at a certain time, so I would hide in the closet just to scare her. And I would do this uh, often. And in the closet, while waiting for her, I'm, like, freaking myself out. Halloween. Yes. The kid behind the curtain. Yes, I'm freaking myself Dick out. Dick move, by the way. Well, yeah, just no, I, to say I, that, I, am, I am a fun you person. It. I'm so much fun oh, to be Oh, yeah, around. that's so much fun. That's so interesting that you would just, like, <laughs> scare your mother who's coming home to take care of you. That's super fucking fun. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> but still, yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> Even then, like just setting yourself, like being in this whole vibe, that's what I'm saying. Like this, like we're all saying, I think this whole movie is just a lettuce moment. It's it really is, man. It's really quite something. Did you did you have the same thought that I did though? This whole like bloody bundle of of Josh's stuff. Okay, can we at least talk about this? That everything that is on record is that it's it's hair and teeth and blood. Hair, teeth, and blood is what everything says. Right. But uh, what is the what's the tongue? I always thought it was a tongue. It looks like a tongue. There's a big mm. white piece there. Like there what is, is a that? like larger piece. There's a of large something. piece of there something is. There's, there. There is that. It, um, but but what is it? There, it's a tongue. It never. Nothing I read says that it's a tongue. Speaking of the filmmakers' commentary, they say that there's so much in there, like teeth, hair, tongue. There's like just viscera, and I think. I Ugh. think it's actually real, it's like cattle blood too. I don't oh, like wow. it. It's gross, and they focus well, on this, it a uh, lot. And is it is it supposed to be um, Josh Josh's shirt? It is. That's yeah, really it's all definitely wrapped in, his right? flannel. Yes. So, and here's here's another part of an, another little bit of insight into how much disconnect there was between the production team and between um, the cast. Right now, I think that they tried to do this on on or without them knowing, but they had to yell taco and basically say, "Hey, stay in your tent. We're doing something." Yes, <laughs> but. They did say, hey, we're doing something, and then they just basically left. And they woke up that next morning, and they saw the bundle of sticks wrapped with everything. And Heather's initial reaction was to just move it. She and threw it. To just throw Which it. Which is on film. Yep, yeah, and yeah. that's part of the film, and it's to throw it away and to be like, I'm just going to respect Pretend this, like that and I'm going to put this over here, and I'm not going to mess with it. I'm not going to tamper with it. I just want to move it out of our path. And that's it. And they had to again <laughs> yell, Taco. As far, Taco. as far as she knew, that was it. And they're like, no, no, no. And they say, it. hey, we need you to open this. And so they go back. She goes back to open it and is genuinely spooked. I by think what it works it so much better just like not seeing anything, man. Like, yeah. It, it, there's a, there's, they have a moment of like her and Mike. Like she puts his, her, which head. by the way is such a weird move that she would even turn a camera on set it down, and then film her being a good Samaritan to hug Mike and be like, look, Mike, it's okay. 
Yeah. At this point, there's no more documentation of this. If if I were there. Yeah. For the movie's sake. For the movie's sake. I, I think agree. it's a beautiful moment, and uh, yeah. I think it breaks up the. I I think it's even it's better where it, like she's she's trying to keep it from Mike. But then she goes and back. so she goes and, and looks Ugh. at it like you know like it's it's like that uh, it's like any movie actually like where you're like I don't want to look at that like oh, I can't fucking help myself because it's she's right. she right. to right. she's the filmmaker she has to go document it she you know? has to she she feels that uh, innate sense of like of of her her role yeah right of I need to document this that we've seen this whole time the the moments though of the cries. Josh's cries. Josh's <laughs> cries of help. Did you close caption this? I, I well, I had it on closed caption, but I I don't know what I. Well, the the interesting thing that I think I saw from closed captioning was that whenever Josh's voice was going in the distance, yeah, it didn't say Josh. No, it said man, like a man, oh. man saying. Okay, this. yes, I do. I know that. Even yeah. though, like we all, that's Josh's voice. Yeah, we know that's Josh's voice. But it, it didn't say that it was Josh saying it. It doesn't it just specify. Says man. I thought that was a very interesting thought. Oh, man. That's a, I mean, if it's deliberate, that's an interesting Correct. touch. I don't know if that's deliberate or not, but yeah. it's, it's something to at least put some weight into. That's fun. I agree with you. I, I, uh, I got I to gotta say, at this point, you know, we've heard Josh and, like, I think we all agree. We've heard the Josh cries of everything, and you're just sitting here thinking, like, yeah, just don't. No, <laughs> no, you don't have to. Like Josh you've got to accept at some point or another. Either he's he's fine or he's fine. Hey, listen, <laughs> we got his tongue right here. So how's he making the yeah. audible? But he does ah. kind of sound like he doesn't have a tongue. You know, like it, it does sound like it, it's like. Oh, 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 or okay, like well just, now I hate that. I hate this too. Um, <laughs> I hate everything about this. <laughs> Oh, thanks. Thanks. Oh, we should. Thanks. Done that I Boy hate Scouts. it. Oh. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. We should do that. Like, let's try to let's try to talk to it. Like, like making whale noises or something. Oh, <laughs> you're just OK. Wait a second here. But going in the house. OK, so they're I feel like you just you just. You just stamped your own ticket They're to the train. They're genuine reactions because they didn't know this house was going to be there. Oh come on! They didn't know. They didn't know no. this was coming up, so they just kind of walked up on it. So their reactions—that's taco for me. Yeah, the reactions. That's taco, taco for me. I'm the reactions. Like, nope. The reactions on film are like, oh, it's a fucking house. I'm like, I don't know, man. The realism is just so immersive, and yeah, I'm like, I right. feel it. I still feel it watching it to this day. And Sean, maybe that's why I don't like. Like their reactions is because it's what would really happen. Yeah. Like I prefer the like the polished, like oh that's what I want you. Oh to my say. god, a house. Yeah, yeah. Like it, it feels should safer we go to me. In? This feels so unsafe. Maybe we to should me. go in. Why the fuck? We oh, there's children's handprints of blood in the wall. Yeah. That was the end for me. You man. can't do that. What the fuck? And kind you know of what? I'll tell you what. This? I'll tell you what's so frightening is that that <laughs> black and white footage, that black and white footage. Somehow of the darkness of the windows, yeah, the broken out windows of blackness. I just, I, I just, uh, it makes me my skin crawl. A every time bit. I watched it growing up, and then like being being interested in film, and then I would eventually like get to the commentary. I was always like, there's a moment where they they're filming the house, and on the left side, it looks like the dead Kennedys mm. sign. Uh, <laughs> sign. And then I watched the the commentary, and one of the direct and one of the producers, I think, was like. If you look over here, it looks like the dead Kennedys. I'm like, fuck yeah! Nice. Yeah, yeah, look, yeah. I'm a filmmaker look now. At me. Yeah, <laughs> look at me. And if you look over here, we had a we had a whole a whole class doing hand turkeys. <laughs> like, fuck off! Like it was Thanksgiving. Uh, you know, it was kind of Thanksgiving time. It's like this is the this uh, is the worst, man. This is like, uh, and and I'll bring it up now, like the the uh, the discombobulation of the Hi8 camera Dude, and the thank CB. You. Thank you. So it's they don't have the debt. It is the audio from the Hi8 camera. So, so the black and white camera has no audio no whatsoever. Audio. And Heather, just has the, Heather has the black and white camera. <coughs> Mike has the Hi8. And so he is going there most of the time, uh, like she is right behind Mike the whole time, you know. And so he's going up the stairs. He's upstairs. He's upstairs. And they both go upstairs. And then he hears him downstairs and he runs downstairs. She, he gets way ahead way. of her. And so all you can hear after he is knocked out, what we can only presume, or knocked <laughs> down at least the camera, what we can hear is her screams 
pretty much approaching her death. Oh, I hate it. It's it is oh. literally her like approaching her demise. Yep. Like she is approaching we're her, seeing her future yes, self yes. In, in the high eight. She is approaching what's going to happen to her. It's so fucking weird. So she's she we're watching her present self approach her future self. Yes. That's what you, uh the the sounds of her future. Mm-hmm. I hate that. <laughs> um thank you. I hate it. And I have to let's let's okay, let's just break this back for a second right. so we can all feel it at some sort of ease. That the the direction of this, the the note drop to Mike was you need to get as far ahead of Heather as possible in this house. That you've go, never been in. That you've never been in. Go upstairs and then you need to run past her pretty much and then go downstairs. Heather will be trailing you. And then during this time that neither of them had any idea actually what was going to happen at this point. And uh, production members, crew members, all dressed in black, would grab Mike, grab his camera, set it down, mm -hmm. and pull him out in the idea of him not making any more noise, and then essentially doing the exact same thing to Heather. Terrifying. So there is a <clears throat> there's a moment where they are, they are going up the stairs where it was like the first night that they ever saw the house. There's a there's a uh, uh, the moments where they are going up the stairs is a cut, and that is the second night. So everything other gotcha. than that was kind of scripted, other than what you're saying. Okay. Because they did tell Heather, or they did tell Mike, like you need to get ahead of her as much as possible. But it is broken up in in a couple nights, and what we see here in the last uh, moments of this movie is okay. Halloween night. Okay. <sighs> and and <sighs> there was a point where. You know, Heather was on such edge at this point that she was basically hyperventilating. They, <laughs> they said you need to shut up because we killed stop you. And she's her. like, I can't. Yeah, they couldn't stop her from from like breathing and and basically going overboard at this point because her adrenaline was pumping so hard. She because she was genuinely scared. They they did do a second take on it mm -hmm. to to have it so she could they could cut the audio. And there's there's several takes of the ending of this too. There's right. like there's Mike standing in the corner with nothing, and then there's Mike standing in the corner away from the camera still with the <laughs> stick figures. And there's also Mike standing facing the camera with stick figures. Like there's he also, one he's like crucified on it, right? There's it's also kind of Mike uh, 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 levitating, and there's also and Mike hung. Oh Jesus! Every other version does not work. Whatsoever. I agree. Then this was the first one they filmed. Then they went back and did all these, yeah. and then they said, "Nah, the first one's the best." Yeah, it's, it's it's the way to go. Studio wanted more, I think, out of this, and studio was right in some aspects of this movie. It sounds like, but in this regard, they like or the test audiences and all that. It was it it all retracted back to that first take, like yeah. you said, Mike. That this is the best one because it's as ambiguous as the rest of the movie. Uh, two two quick fan theories for you on this. There's some interesting thoughts on this. The one big fan theory on Blair Witch is that there was time travel that existed in this. Many speculate the Blair Witch can actually manipulate time inside those woods. Uh, once Josh, Mike, and Heather park their car and enter the woods, they're taken back in time to when Rustin Parr was still alive. This can be explained on why they couldn't find the car or, or any roads uh, because they didn't exist. It wasn't plowed yet. It, yeah, it okay. didn't even exist. Also, the forest area would have been way bigger 50 years ago. Uh, we have to assume that search parties were looking for him, which is why they couldn't find them. It's because they weren't even in that time era at this point. An interesting piece to prove that this is Rustin Parr's house they stumble on. Uh, so listen to this. The, the, on the website to promote the movie, it said that Heather's journal and all the film camera were found buried under the foundation of a 100-year-old cabin. Oh, It said that. The, a, a crumpled foundation yeah. of a cabin. Said it on the website. And so this can help support that they were oh. basically back in time when the house was still intact when the Blair Witch used Rustin, Rustin Parr under her spell to lure them into the house to kill them, just like he did back in the day when uh, he was executed. Maybe he was. Maybe they were three of the kids that were killed back in the day. Yeah, I and just, unaccounted right. for. So many chills up. That's what I'm spine. saying. And then the cameras and footage were pushed forward into time underneath the house where they were undisturbed, waiting to be found. Man. 
by the other people. Yeah. And there's apparently in the video game, there's a video game called Rust and Par where there's a scene where you're in the basement and a ghost-like figure with a camera comes running on the steps and vanishes with a, with a video camera. Ugh. I don't, wow. I'm terrified of it. The second theory is that Josh was actually the one that killed Mike and Heather. Right, you there heard was that no one? witch, right? Yeah, so so it's inferred that in the 40s, the Blair Witch possessed Rustin Parr and made him do her evil work by luring the kids to the house. She eventually released Rustin from her control. He was captured and executed. The Blair Witch needed to pick one of these three hikers to do her bidding. She obviously chose Josh, Josh after he knocked over the Karen. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was like, okay, cool, I'm going to continue to target this guy. The blue slime, all the shit out of his of his bag strewn everywhere. She eventually lures Josh out at night, takes possession of him, just like she did Rustin Parr. And Josh's was the one that basically committed the murder of Mike and Heather. Oh. After disappearing, pretended like he was in danger. We never see Josh killed, only assume he dies based on his failure to return. So that's an interesting thought to say that he was the one that actually committed it. Under the spell, you can of the still Blair kill Witch. people without a tongue and teeth, and you hair still can, and, man. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Interesting theories, there, boys. I like that a lot. Those are cool. There was one more out yeah. there. Do you want me to please expel? Okay, well, wall, 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 guys. No, the idea actually is that again, the Blair Witch was uh, uh, just a a geist to uh, an idea that. Josh and Mike used ah. to essentially create m- what some might call a snuff film to kill Heather. Oh. Based on some of the history between Josh and Heather. Yeah. As well as bringing in Mike to help him do it. And that the idea that Mike was running ahead of Heather and the fact that she speculates there was speculation that they were in on it together, in fact with the map and that they're holding the map and that they're making a joke of some kind that she speculates in the middle of the film. Yep. And by the end of it, Josh disappears. They use that as the notion to follow Josh into this house. Mike gets ahead of Heather. Mm -hmm. And by the time that Heather gets there, sees one of them, the other one takes her out. Yep. And there's then they a, just disappear. And then they all disappear. There's yep. a true crime thing, too, as well. I think they're called the uh, Scream Killers. So uh, these two friends went to this uh, woman's house, and they filmed all of it on VHS in the 90s. And they went to their friend's house and killed her. And like, it, like most of what you can see on like YouTube is them like, I just killed whoever. I just killed this... And they're like all stoked about it, and it's just so eerie. Yeah, that reminds me of that so much. But then there's like it also reminds me of just like horror in the '90s, and that yeah. was what it what it is. I I can't wait. I'm I'm so glad we're doing Scream on top of all I this, know it. Where it's just like there's something about the '90s horror and like Felt '90s different. like forest kind of things, and like the, that that deception as well. Yeah, I don't know. There and well, you know, Columbine. We can't talk about it without talking about that. Yeah, I guess. That's true. It, the deception of your friends, you know, that it makes it calls into effect that so much, I think. Yeah, absolutely. It's weird. It's creepy. Absolutely. Well, boys, we've dissected it with a modern eye. It's time to give it a modern day rating. Sean, let's start with you, man. What do you think about this movie, Modern Day? Um, uh, like I said, watching this, rewatching this movie over again, I, I, I'm still scared of this movie. Like, even driving today, kind of like listening to <laughs> uh, uh, YouTube videos and stuff. Um, listening to like all the music of like just their background music and talking about this movie and like even like the 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 documentary Curse of the Blair Witch is still fucking freaky, man. And uh, like I said in the episode, watching this movie with all my Halloween lights on, I was scared to go to bed. I was <laughs> I was scared to like close my eyes. Um, uh, and speaking of that, I like her. Uh, we didn't really talk about that the moment of oh, the yeah, movie yeah. where it's basically Heather created all that. the most famous moment like she did all that all of her lines she did all that performance she did all that herself even like uh it, she thought she was supposed Dude. to be in frame the whole time her whole face is let us moment but it was zoomed in accidentally and we just got her nose and her eyes which makes it even more uncanny yeah um yeah i i like like you just said i think this whole movie is a lettuce moment i think we will never get a movie like this ever again i think it's kind of a fucking masterpiece and with that i am going to give it and 8.7. 8.7 for Sean or AJ, what about you, man? Uh, you know, I 
I have to give like the I've got to drop that respect. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like y- you 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 have to think about this movie like Sean is saying. I don't know that we'll ever be able to have another movie like this again. Uh it's for somebody to be able to create this. Um I think one of the most I think one of the closer things even though it's not necessarily the same idea, I think one of the closest things actually is the battery, which I watched recently. Oh, cool! Um, that Sean has talked about for honestly years at this point, and uh, in a good way, <laughs> um, not, not a douche way. Um, but I did finally watch that, and I think that there's some. Uh, I think there's some uh, moments that are very, very comparable, and um, <clears throat> I think that I think that this movie plays on your mind as much as any movie that you'll ever come across you know you're going to you're going to yuck this up in your own mind as much as anything and i think there's a lot of respect to be had about this movie uh the the idea that people will bash this movie and say nothing happens and there's nothing it's silly it's ridiculous and you don't even see anything and i think that's what truly makes this uh kind of a terrifying idea and and uh something to watch um, and I would love to be able to watch this movie on a true VHS experience. I think that would, uh, I do believe that that might increase my score that I'm about to give it. But that being said, I was a 6.6 originally what I decided to give this, uh, because trying not to be the tough guy, <laughs> right? I'm going to go ahead and give this a, uh, a 7.7, um, because I truly do believe that there's nothing else like it. And I think it's just as unnerving as something that is as in your face as a, as a true slasher. So, yeah. yeah, you guys both nailed it. I, it's not the scariest movie I've ever seen. It's not the best horror movie I've ever seen, but it is so damn original and so many lettuce moments and just like it can never be done again. I, I it's just it was a perfect moment in time that is endlessly rewatchable. Honestly, uh, I'm going to especially go- this this time yeah. of all time. It's like oh, the, the, everything about it, the foliage yep. is just incredible. Looking. The yep. moments you don't think that it's rewatchable and that you're questioning it being like so Still easily is. watchable, it's actually what makes it somehow watchable. I don't yep. know. It's really hard to explain. I'm going to give it a seven point nine nine. Executive producer Josh Miller says after my confused breakfast rewatch, this movie still has that magic terror it always has. In other ways, the movie isn't as good as I want it to be. Overall, for what it was meant to be, it still looks great and generally feels real. Sure, there are some parts where it feels forced or you look at the characters and question their decision decision making. Oh, yeah. Or is it is it their poor decision, bad judgment, all part of the witch's plan? This goes back to my earlier point. How are you watching this movie? Are you ready to get lost in factual found footage movie, or are you here to tear the movie apart? Right. This movie looks bad, but that's not even by design, but by time period. Many DV cameras were top of the line at the time and massively expensive, so not readily available for most. So they are just using what they could get their hands on, 16 millimeter and a DAT. We are ultimately spoiled by today's standards that our phones do everything they did 1,000 times better. The acting was quite good from all unknowns. If I remember right, well after the movie had come out, we learned that there was no real script, but general guidelines given to each of the actors separately each day, and the filmmakers were the ones that were messing with them nightly. When it comes down to it, love it or hate it, love the genre or hate the genre, this film changed movie making as a whole. Mm -hmm. It gave us a new genre of film, some done very well. One of my favorites, check out Hell House LLC. It's good. I would love to see this covered, but it's from 2017. You're right. Let's be (laughs) honest. A bunch have done horribly. Unfriended comes to mind. Ooh, I kind of like it, Josh. I kind of like it. Oh, that's it, Josh. You're off. You're off. <laughs> <laughs> but that is the nature of horror movies. Production companies can turn them out by the dozens because there's little to no financial risk. They are generally profit machines. Sure, Blair Witch and Paranormal Normal Activity were beyond wildly and exceptionally successful, but most are made for modest budgets of under five to ten million on the high side. They are high ROI and profit mach- machines. In the end, for me, this movie has definitely isn't okay sorry i'll cut that out we want to switch for me real quick 
in the end for me, this movie it definitely isn't as good as when I first saw it, but I can still appreciate it. My modern day score dips, but it's still better than a movie. I give it a 6.95. That takes us to 7.84. Oh, okay. Wow. 7.84 on modern day ratings is going to take this. Woo-hoo. That is going to take it to a tie in the 46th spot with Mrs. Doubtfire, just above <laughs> Monster Squad, just below American Psycho is where that's going to fall. All right, man. That feels good. Fair enough. I like that a lot. It might be our highest rated uh, uh, horror movie, I guess, that we've done so far. No way. The Shining, that's up there. The, the Thing? thing? The, the Thing. thing. I don't know. Let's find The Thing here real quick. Let's Ready? find The Thing. Uh, the thing is 37, 7.99. Yeah. Oh, yep. Yeah. Oh, I, yeah. Yeah, maybe, maybe could have been a little higher, but at the same time, you know what? I mean, that is, that's where it's at. Well, and this even, this, I, I forgot to say, this wasn't even like the first one of its kind. Like the found footage genre yeah. has been established, like with Cannibal Holocaust. Like, watch that on, on your own will because it's, it's definitely up there with terrifying. But then, like, even Man Bites Dog, not, ne- not necessarily like a horror movie, but still kind of found footage in, the, in that area. Um, but definitely the movie to kick off. What we know, what we now know as the found footage genre. Yep, I agree. Well, we hope you enjoyed the episode. Thanks a million for being here. Tune in next week. Spooky season continues. We got Scream. Let's go. Voted on directly by our beautiful Patreon members. Followed mm. by the Goat Halloween. We're doing it. We're doing it. Also, if you're new to the podcast, go back this time last year. The Lost Boys. That's more up AJ's alley of spookiness. But he didn't like it as He much. didn't like it. I don't like Lost Boys. That saxophone player. <laughs> <sighs> uh, Just kidding. That We will go ahead and we'll continue on with the spooky season. I know you guys are here for the spooky season. That's spooky with E-W-K-Y. Uh, we'll get there guys but thank you so much for listening we really do appreciate it we really appreciate you checking us out and leaving us that five star review if you feel so inclined drop us a line to write that review on Apple Podcast uh, catch us on the social medias it's at Confused Breakfast just search for Confused Breakfast guys on those social medias and by all means check us out on YouTube because we love hanging out and getting all the physical jokes out of the way in front of this fun cool set at Upload Media. Go to confusedbreakfast.com. Confused. Confused. And uh, see our merch. You can get some buttons. You can get some shirts. You can get some koozies. You can get some little stick figures that are kind of fun that have have our uh, little initials carved into them. <sighs> Go to the same damn website and see our reviews of the movies we've done. You can see AJ's reviews. You can see Mike's reviews. You can see my reviews. You can see the whole shows in general. Goodbye. Stay out of the woods, I guess. Support us two ways. Uh, buy stuff from our sponsors, our amazing sponsors, and also sponsor us directly. Patreon.com slash Confused Breakfast. Get tons of great perks. We are produced by Upload Media Group here in Cedar Rapids. We got Logan Logan's on the controls. We call him Uck Uplogs. Uplog. Uh, he hates it. Media. He hates it, and he's so ready to get out of here. Yep. And we are a proud member of the Cloud 10 iHeart Podcast Network. Check out more information at cloud10.fm. That's it. Goodbye. Goodbye. Forever. Three podcasters went into a podcast that didn't come out. Four. <laughs>